Hello everyone. This is Palak Vadadia from LG Institute of Engineering and Technology in Department of Electronics and Communication. Today we will discuss the two topic of the subject that is network theory. Our first topic that is the poles and zeros of a network function. And the second topic that is from our last chapter that is what is a passive network synthesis. So this is our last topics of our syllabus that is the network theory. Then after our hundred percent syllabus will complete. So we will discuss first that is our poles and zeros of the network function. And you know that already you study the subject that is control system, right? So in that you easily you know how to find out the poles and zeros of any transfer function. The same thing we will discuss here. So let's start our today's session. So first we will discuss about the poles and zero. So here one transfer function is given to you. Whenever you want to find out the poles and zero, then you require the first transfer function. And what is the transfer function? Then it's a what is the ratio of output upon input. But here you have to add one more condition. That is what is the ratio of Laplace transform of output upon input and you have to consider all initial conditions that equal to what it's a zero so here the one function is given to us that is y of s upon x of s y of s is my output and x of s is my input and here all the term that is what in the term of s s matlab what that is it's a laplace so this will become b0 s s to m plus b1 s s to m minus 1 plus then b m minus 1 into s and then b m divided by a0 s s to n plus a1 s s to n minus 1 plus a into n minus 1 s and then a n. Now if I want to find out the poles and 0 then the definition is what? The roots of the denominator polynomial of the transfer function are called as a poles. So when you find the uh, roots of the denominator and then simply you have to equate that with the z. So whatever the value you are getting that is known as a pose of the function. Now for the zero simply you have to take numerator that equal to zero. So the roots of the numerator polynomial of the transfer functions are known as a zero. And of course that will be represented by the small x and the zero that we have to replace by the small represent by the small o or we can say it's a small z all right so you have to use this notation when we want to plot the poles and zeros on a s plane and you know this very well because you have i think you study the root locus and everything in a control system now next See here, first of all, I'm just consider the one transfer function. Here, my transfer function that equal to what is s plus 2 divided by s plus 3. Now, as we discuss, if I want to find out the poles of this function, then simply what I have to take the denominator that equal to 0. So, poles that equal to s plus 3 that equal to 0. So, the value of s that will become what is a minus 3. Now to find out the zeros, what I have to make? That is numerator that equal to 0. So this is what is s plus 2 that equal to 0. So the value of s that will become what is a minus 2. So the pole of this transfer function is minus 3 and the zero of this transfer function is what is a minus 2. Now if I want to plot this in a s plane, then here in a s plane we have a one real axis and we have a one imaginary axis. Now we know that the pole that will be represented by the small x and the 0 that will be represented by the small 0 like this. See the minus 2 and minus 3. Now this pole and 0 that is lying on the left hand side of the S plane like this. So we can say that the given system is what? It's a stable system. Okay. Here. In a, in a network theory, in GTU exam, they will ask one short note that is about the poles and zero. Then you have to explain by taking one example of stable system, unstable system and marginally stable. So here the first example that I have taken that is about the stable system. So you can take any transfer function if you want to make S plus 5, S plus 9 that is all right. Okay. Now in the next we will take the example of the unstable system. 
So, for example, see the transfer function is what is s minus 3 divided by s minus 2. So, the pole of this function that will become s equal to 2 and the 0 that will become s that equal to what is a 3. And when I plot this on a s plane, see, the, all my poles and zeros are lying on the right hand side of the s plane. So, the system will become unstable. Now you know for the marginally stable, my poles and zeros are lying on the what? It's an imaginary axis. So based on that, I'll just consider the one transfer function. That is 1 divided by s square plus 1. So the poles of this function is what? It's s square plus 1 that equal to 0. So the s square that equal to minus 1. So s that equal to plus or minus j. Alright, and as such we do not have any 0 in our transfer function. So, when I plot this on a S plane, see this is the location of my poles. So, my poles are lying on the imaginary axis. So, the system will become what is a marginally stable. Alright. So, whenever one short notice asks about the poles and zero, then first of all you have to write down the one generalized transfer function. And then you have to define the poles and zeros. And then you have to take a three different examples that is stable, marginally stable and unstable. Now next we will discuss of an example here, a network and poles and zero diagram of driving point impedance Z of S is given to us and we want to calculate the value of parameter that is R, L, G and C of the function and here the one condition is given to us that is Z of J0 that equal to 1 and this tool di diagram is given to us. Then first of all what we will do, we will just find out the Z of S. But here the parallel connection is given to us. So instead of Z of S, what we will do? We will find the Y of S because simply in admittance we have to add this. So Y of S that equal to G. Then you have to take the reciprocal. Here already reciprocal of the resistance is what G. So I directly I am taking G. 1 upon CS reciprocal that is what is a CS. Then R plus LS reciprocal that is what is a 1 upon R plus LS. Now simply you just take the LCM. So, this will become G plus CS, R plus LS plus 1 divided by R plus LS. Alright. Now, simply you just solve this. Then what we will get? You just multiply this two bracket. That is G plus CS and R plus LS. So, what we get? LCS square plus GL plus CR into S. GR plus 1 divided by R plus LS. Now, See, we know that the ZS that equal to what is 1 upon Y of S. So, simply what we have to do? We have to take the reciprocal. So, my Z of S will become LS plus R upon LCS square plus GL into RC into S plus 1 plus RG. Now, you just take the common that is in the numerator L and from the denominator LC because I want the S square as it is. So, numerator will become L, S plus R by L, LC, then S square plus GL plus RC divided by LC into S plus 1 plus RG divided by LC. Now, this LL will cancel out. So, what we will get? 1 by C, S plus R by L upon S square plus GL plus RC divided by LC into S plus 1 plus RG divided by LC. So, this is what is the value of my Z of S. Here simply what I will do, I will just uh, separate the denominator. Now, you just recall about this pole 0 diagram. Here in this diagram, see we have the location of pole that is at minus 3 plus 3J, minus 3 minus 3J. And the location of the 0 that is what at the minus 2. So based on this diagram we can easily find out the transfer function. Because we know that the poles are what is the, that is represent in the denominator and the zeros are the part of the numerator. So my transfer function will become Z of S H. H is what is some constant term. And this S plus 2 then and then my 0 will become S equal to minus 2. So S plus 2 divided by S plus 3 plus 3j, s plus 3 minus 3j. 
so now if i take my denominator that equal to 0 then the value of s that will become minus 3 minus 3j minus 3 plus 3j all right now if you multiply this bracket then the value of z of s that will become h into s plus 2 upon s square plus 6s plus 18 now See, this is the value of 2z of s. One is that is based on the pole 0 diagram and another is based on the circuit diagram. Now, we want to compare this. But before that, one more condition is given to us that is z of j0 that equal to 1. And this condition is given to us in our question. So, what I will do? I will put s because this is what? It is a function of s. And instead of s, what I have to do? I have to put 0. In this equation. So what I will get? That is h2 divided by 18. And that equal to what is a 1? So the value of h that will become what is a 9? Now you just compare these two equations. Z of s, z of s equation. Here I have a h and here in the z of s equation I have a 1 by c. So simply what we can say that 9 that equal to 1 by c. C equal to what is a 1 by 9 Faraday. Alright, now you just compare the numerator. In a numerator s plus 2 and here I have a s plus r by l. So the value of r by l that will become what is it 2? Now you just compare the denominator. We have a s square, s square as it is. And here we have the coefficient of the s that equal to 6. And this side we have the coefficient of the s that is g by c plus r by l. Now already we have the value of r by l that equal to 2. You just substitute what we will get. g by c that equal to 6 minus 2. So the value of g that will become 4. And the value of c that is what is a 1 by 9. So is what is a 4 by 9 ohm. So if the value of g is 4 by 9 ohm then definitely the value of resistance is what is a inverse of g. So it is a 9 by 4 ohm. Now you just put this value in this equation. So you will get the value of inductor that is what is R by 2 and that equal to 9 by 800. So I hope this example is clear. So this can be asked in a 4 to 7 marks. Alright, any, any other diagram will be given to you and some value of transfer function, pole 0 diagram will be given to you. In other sense, they will ask, one, one circuit diagram will be given to you. Based on that, you have to find out the transfer function. And then you have to float that poles and zeros on a S plane. That question can be asked in a 4 marks. Now next we will discuss the last topic of our syllabus that is the network synthesis. So the network synthesis theory involves the synthesis of the network made up with the both that is active as well as passive components. So now we will discuss the stability of the network function. Now already you know how to find out the stability, right, in a control system. The same fundamental we will use over here. So the degree of the numerator should not be excess the degree of the denominator. That is the first criteria. Or in other words, you can say that m minus n should be less than or equal to 1. The f of s should not have a multiple poles on a j omega axis. Right, or we can say on a y-axis or we can say on an imaginary axis. And then f of s should not have a pulse on the right-hand side of the S-plane. If we have any pole on the right-hand side of the S-plane, then our system will become unstable. Now then we will discuss about the positive real function. Any function, right, that is which is in the form of f of s will be considered as a positive real function if we... If that function will fulfill the following conditions, the first condition is the f of s should give the real value of all real values of s. Then p of s should be the Ruthwitz polynomial. Now you know what is the Ruthwitz, right? Polynomial. Because already you study the Rh criteria. So in that Rh, R that is represent the root and H that is represent the Ruthwitz. And if we substitute s equal to j omega, then the separating the real and imaginary part, the real part of the function should be greater than or equal to 0. That means that should be what? It's a non-negative function. 
and the fourth one is what under substituting s equal to g omega the f of s should possess the simple poles and the residues should be real and positive this can be asked for the four mark what is a positive real function and last we will discuss about the properties of the positive real functions now the both the numerator and denominator should be the ruthwise polynomial as we discuss in a positive real function then the degree of the numerator of f of s should not exceed the degree of denominator more than unity in other words the m minus n should be should be less than or equal to 1 and if f of s is a positive real function then the reciprocal of f of s should also be the positive real function. and remember the summation of two more positive real function is always positive real function but that is not the true in case of the difference or subtraction so the but in case of the difference it may or may not be positive real function all right so this is our last chapter that is network synthesis and this question may be asked for the four marks in gt all right so i hope this last topic is clear to you now we just complete our 100% of syllabus thank you